Hey there, it's Jenny from Southern Savers. It's time for our Monday night Q&A, which is your chance to ask any questions that you have, saving money, budgeting, couponing, I don't really care. The sky's the limit. You can ask whatever you'd like, though occasionally I will say I don't know the answer, um, but maybe that's fun. Try to stump Jenny. I always like to come with a topic, um, and we tend to rotate through some of the favorites, so I thought we would do meat and produce tonight. We've done this a lot before, so if you have heard this, it can be a refresher, but if you've got other questions, we can go there too. We do not have to stick on meat and produce, so ask seriously whatever your questions are. And hello to everyone that's chiming in. It's always fun for me to have um, some of the same faces on every night. This is like our um, our own personal, uh, I don't know, support group and chat room and everything else in the mix. A lot of times you'll ask a question and folks will answer it in the comments before I even get to it. So that's part of the fun of tonight. Um, and hello, Anna from Las Vegas. I hope that everything is um, kind of becoming more calm for you. You are um, definitely in my thoughts, actually knowing somebody in the area, Anna, um, with everything that's gone on. Been in our thoughts and our prayers as it, uh, we've just kind of, it doesn't feel like it affects you this far away, but it does as a country. Um, so to dive in, uh, meat and produce, this is probably the number one question that I get. I get it in emails and Facebook messages because no, we don't have coupons for produce and meat very often. I get that. Um, though people always seem to think that we do. They'll always ask, where are you getting your coupons for meat and produce? You aren't. They, there really are not a lot. If we do get coupons for anything, my husband's bringing me props um, while we talk. So if we do get coupons for anything, it's our sausages and our hot dogs and more of our packaged meat than our fresh meat. So we're not going to get a lot of coupons here, but we are going to get some savings if we know how to shop the deal. Um, so typically for meat and produce, I would encourage you to get out of the grocery store. Um, packaged meats, obviously I'm going to get a pretty good deal in the grocery store, but most other items are fresh meat and our fresh produce, much better deals in um, a local farmer's market, buying bulk from various places. So, you know, I'll give you our tips of where we shop from, but not in the grocery store. Um, an example, there's a really great website. I've shortened the link and I'll stick this um, in the comments for you guys. But um, if you go to um, so.svrs, dot me slash market um, and I'll stick this in the comments in just a second so give me two seconds um, it that um, is a shortened link that takes you to a USDA uh, long government site um, every every day the report changes but that shortened link will always take you to the right place so um, give me just a second I got it on the YouTube side it always takes me a minute to get it everywhere else I'll get it on the Facebook side um, and with this report what you're looking at when you get to pull up this URL is um, what the USDA is tracking today at federal farmers markets. And this particular report is the farmers market for Columbia, South Carolina, which I know not everybody is in the Columbia area, but, uh, and there's the link, I just got it on the Facebook side. Um, not everybody's in Columbia, but there are only 19 federal markets in the country, guys. So, you know, just looking at one of them is a really big help for you as you're trying to figure out what a good price is. So pull up this report. I know you probably can't watch a Facebook Live and pull it up at the same time. So I'm going to kind of tell you what it looks like and then when we're done. You can pull it up um, unless you're on your computer for my YouTube folks. Um, but what the report shows you is what was on sale today at the, at the farmer's market, the federal market, and how much it was going for on average. For you, what this tells you is a couple things. It tells me before I go to my local farmer's market, what's the price that I should be expecting and what's in season? Because if all that's in season are beets and rutabagas and I don't even, I don't wanna go. 
I'm just stay home. Um, those are not things that I'm going to eat. And once you're the mom, you don't have to eat them. That's the joy of growing up, right? So I'm not going to go if it's not food that I want. Um, that's a, a huge reason to look at the report. But the prices are really the big one. And for me, the prices are enough to realize I do not want to be in the grocery store. So Tanya, you are asking a great question. Tanya says, is there one in the Nashville area? Just to kind of put this in perspective for everyone, um, no, there's not. And for most of you, no, there's not one in your backyard. There are 19 federal markets in the U.S., but there are tons of farmers markets. So Tanya, what you're gonna do is look for the biggest farmers market available to you. Uh, no, you don't wanna drive to Atlanta. That's the closest federal market to Nashville, Tanya. It's a really long way to go to get your produce. But look for the biggest farmers market near you and you are gonna be shopping at that farmers market from one of two people. You're either shopping um, from a farmer who chose to not drive to Atlanta uh, and Kathy Greenville in Asheville, again, the closest one for you guys is Columbia. So um, here are the federal markets in the South, just to help you guys out. We've got one in Miami, one in Columbia, one in Atlanta, Georgia, um, one in, I think there's one in Memphis, Tennessee, or in that neck of the woods. Uh, then we're going to go much further into the Texas market and then further out west. So there's not much in the southeast federal wise, guys. But these numbers still apply to your local markets. That's what I want you to get. So still pull this report because when you head to the farmer's market in Nashville, and uh, uh, my husband's show and tell, and you wanna buy okra, then I can pull up and see on the market, here we go, I can get a half, one half um, bushel crate of okra, uh, is going for about 20 bucks. Now, a half bushel crate, it's hard to even visualize that, but it's probably um, around 10 to 12 pounds, maybe even more. Um, okra doesn't actually weigh a lot. Uh, then that helps you to get an idea price-wise what I'm looking for when I head to my local farmer's market. So you may or may not have one in your neck of the woods, but these prices are still gonna be similar to what you are gonna find in your area. So you wanna pull the report. I already put the link in the comments, so if you're joining in late, you can scroll through and find the link to what I'm talking about. So to give you some examples of what's on this report, um, I just gave you the okra price, a half bushel carton of okra is going for about 20 bucks. Um, uh, some that, you know, obviously you would pur purchase on a normal basis. Let's go sweet potatoes, guys. Sweet potatoes are on sale um, starting Wednesday in the in Bilo in Winn-Dixie for 79 cents a pound. That's what most of the stores have them out about right now. So 79 cents to 99 cents a pound on sale is what the grocery stores are going to say for sweet potatoes. However, I could go to the farmer's market. I could buy 40 pounds. That's a lot of sweet potatoes. 40 pounds of sweet potatoes are going for between 15 and 18 bucks. Guys, that's less than 50 cents a pound. It's really almost like 40 cents a pound. So the grocery store on sale is two times the price of the farmer's market. That's what I want people to get. The markup on produce, on on sale produce in the grocery store is massive. So they're telling you it's on sale, but you're still paying double the price of the farmer's market. Now, the next thing that I get from folks on that is like, yeah, but I don't want 40 pounds of sweet potatoes, Jenny. It's a great idea, but who wants 40 pounds of sweet potatoes? I get it. We don't want that, that much either. This is why if you're going to the farmer's market, you need to go with friends. Grab two or three other people, four or five, you know, go as big as you want here. Grab that box of sweet potatoes for 15 bucks and split it up. They're gonna last. Those sweet potatoes will probably still be good for Thanksgiving. You can, you can even freeze them and get them set for uh, anywhere you want to. For Christmas, we can go further out. So for folks who are asking federal markets, again, we've got um, Columbia, South Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia, Miami, Florida, Memphis, Tennessee. Um, there are 19 in the country, but there are still a ton of big markets that you can shop at. Um, so use these prices to get an idea of what to expect in your market and what's on uh, what's in season because the same things are in season in Columbia, South Carolina as they are in Greenville, South Carolina. It's not going to be that much of a change 
anywhere in the South, guys. So it's helping you to see what's in season and what's the going rate. These are great, great tips to use that market report before you go to the farmer's market. Do I need 40 pounds? No, but I want to go with a friend. Um, so Jamie, another great question. How do we find a local farmer's market? I don't know of one in my area. So another website that I recommend, Jamie, is called localharvest.org. Um, and localharvest.org will let you put in your zip code and then it will show you every farmer's market that is right nearby, every farm that will let you direct sell from them. It is a listing, so if the farm has not you know, put themselves there, it may not show up. But Local Harvest is a great one. Thank you, Erin. Uh, you beat my husband to the punch. Um, good job. So um, Local Harvest is a great way to find out your particular farmer's markets. And if that doesn't return anything, Guys, just stick something on Facebook. Hey, looking for a farmer's mar market that's nearby. What we don't want, so a little inside tip on farmer's markets. I don't want the frou-frou fancy market that is on the corner of the bank in downtown City Hall. Um, those can be very expensive. Um, I want a farmer's market that I really could walk in and buy in bulk. Um, so... Just keep that in mind. I don't want frou-frou because frou-frou is going to cost me a lot more, guys. We're not, we're not in for fancy. We, we want to save money. So I want to look for the farmer's market that's going to let me buy the basket of peaches, not the little bowl of peaches. So keep that in mind as you're trying to find a farmer's market that being able to buy that bulk size really is where the savings is, not in the little tiny basket. It's one thing if you're wanting to buy just local from a farmer so that you're buying local, but it's another thing to want to buy in bulk from the farmer um, because that's where the saving is. Yes, Erin, frou-frou equals arm and a leg usually is always the case. Um, I've been teaching my kids this, by the way, too, as we went hunting for uh, you know, the best deal on orthodontics um, in this past year. They fell in love with the orthodontics office that offered donuts and all these things like, girls, those donuts are not free. You have to pay for those donuts in a very roundabout way. So you just keep that in mind as you look for a farmer's market. We are looking for one that just gives us the bulk price and kind of the best deals. Um, so, so someone's saying on the Columbia side, what about Soda City? That would be, you know, any um, local city, uh, Amanda's mentioning, that has that downtown market one. It can be a deal. Soda City has the potential to be a deal. We just want bulk. That's really where the savings is. We want to split that up with friends. So another option here in produce land is to look for a produce co-op. And there are a lot of co-ops available. Um, this is another thing where you could just Google the name of your city and the word co-op. Um, and Maureen saying, I Google everything. Uh, I love, yes, it, it, Google is, I mean, it's just a solution. It's a verb. Um, and, you know, make sure even before you're going to Soda City or to your local farmer's market that you're pulling up that market report that I put the link into and kind of take that with you so that you've got um, what those prices should be. And we don't think about it, but when we head to a farmer's market, this should be a haggling situation. So if I'm walking in and he says, hey, I've got this 40 pound box of sweet potatoes, how about 30 bucks for it? You can say, woo, you know, how about 20? Or you know the price, you have that market report of what it's going for at the federal level. So it's the same rate. It's what the farmer could have gotten if they sold at the federal level they shouldn't be asking too much more to sell it to you. Unless those are gold-plated sweet potatoes, we shouldn't have to pay that much more over the normal price. Um, so, um, <laughs> let's see. Um, and I missed your question, Erin, there on the, um, the snow. I saw that pop in. Um, can uh, can I get better deals in the store? So Kelly, no, generally not. The grocery store is generally two times the price of a bulk farm of a true farmers market. Um, so if you don't have a true farmers market, maybe we're kind of looking for um, something that's within a thirty mile radius. Maybe we're going to drive to it. We only need to go once a month, guys. Um, get it in bulk. 
this produce is going to last a lot longer than produce from a grocery store as well because it was probably picked yesterday or the day before. It's not sat in a warehouse for a long time. It's a lot more fresh than what you're grabbing from the grocery store too. And we don't really realize that until you get home with farmer's market produce and you see just how long farmer's market produce lasts. Um, so how do we find non fruit fruit produce in the winter um, if you're not living in the South? Um, that can be tricky, Erin. In general, even in the South, um, you know, South Carolina, I feel like we're the heart of the South, but we're still going to have a farmer's market with not a lot of choices in the dead of winter because not much is going to grow once we start having frost outside. That is really where, I mean, it's like a cardinal rule of savings with vegetables is that putting things up when they're in season is one of the biggest things that you can do to save. So I want to buy field peas and butter beans and corn and everything else that I can in bulk. And I want to freeze it so that during the winter, I don't have to buy those items at the farmer's market. During the winter in the farmer's market, when you pull that market report, Erin, pretty much all that's going to be there are root vegetables. So we're going to get lots of onions and sweet potatoes and beets and, um, and our greens. We're going to have lettuces. Uh, and other items. That's it. That's all that really grows in the winter in the south, unless you're in the deep south. Um, they will bring in some, and they'll even have that. This market report has out-of-state produce um, that's on there. So you will find some bananas and other things that have come in um, from other countries, but the smaller your farmer's market, that will not be there. Um, so at a federal market, that's going to be there because the USDA is there buying as well. Um, but in a small farmer's market, you're going to have to stick with what's in season and definitely putting up. So let's just stop there for a second because everybody always asks, um, you know, how do we put these up? How do we, um, you know, what are some rules there? How do we get it to last? Um, let's see. Um, I, I'm trying to catch up with questions too. Um, and Debbie, the link to the market report is if you scroll up through the comments, um, it's in the comments. It's a shortened link. Um, it's a much longer link if you try to go there directly. But so.svrs, so it's Southern Savers. There we go. My husband stuck it in for you. Um, but that's your market report. So let's talk about putting these up because we do. We want to put them up in bulk while they're in season. So we uh, went apple picking. Someone's saying apple orchards too. Uh, we went apple picking, uh, I guess... Weekends are all a blur now, a week and a half ago now, um, at an orchard up in North Carolina. This is the rest of what's left of one of our bags because with five children, you go through apples pretty quick. But I want to put up what I can. Um, pretty much anything can be put in the freezer. Google is your best friend here too. Vegetables will need to be blanched for a very quick blanching, which means boiling water for just a few seconds and then ice water to stop it. That just stops the growth. Vacuum seal. So that is where I push most people. Um, the general rule of thumb with trying to store items, if I want to store it for six weeks or less, Ziploc is fine. But if I want to store it for longer than six weeks, it needs to be vacuum sealed. You will deal with freezer burn and you won't want to eat it. Um, after that mark. So six weeks or less, Ziploc bags are fine. Six weeks or more, we're going to need to vacuum seal it. Um, we did have, I need to check, I should have checked before we got started. We had some really great um, coupons for Food Saver vacuum sealers. Let me see if they're still there. Um, they are. So if you head to um, the coupon database on Southern Savers and just type in Food Saver, all one word, um, you will find a $20 off food saver vacuum sealer, $10 off food saver bags and rolls that you can print and take um, to any store really and grab it. Some of the best deals on that are to head to Target, Bed Bath & Beyond and use that Bed Bath & Beyond 20% off that comes in all of your mailers along with that manufacturer's coupon for $20 off. So if you need a vacuum sealer, that's your deal. We don't always have those printable coupons, so it's fun that they're available while we're talking about this. And then the other one for rolls, uh, and I've mentioned this in uh, videos in the past, we do not buy the name brand rolls very often. We tend to buy 
off-brand roles on Amazon, uh, and they work just as well. So I um, will stick that link in in just a second too on the on the roles that we grab. Uh, Ruben, which model on the Food Saver? Really, they're all about the same, but I would recommend um, one of the models that um, it it looks more vertical than just being the little flat guy. So the little flat box, I have one of each. And what I found is that the little tiny one that is the much, much cheaper one, the tray that sucks up juice from the chicken and from all of the things that you're putting on, that tray fills up really, really fast on that little tiny one. And so you're constantly emptying the tray um, versus my tall one, the tray, uh, it just doesn't fill up as fast. I don't know why. It doesn't appear to be magically bigger or one versus the other, but it really is kind of a difference. Um, <laughs> I'm glad, Heidi, that you you did buy one in the end. It, it is a big savings to not lose frozen food and get it to last longer um, to have that vacuum sealer. So I stuck the link in the comments um, for the... Um, rolls that we use from Amazon. They are cheaper than the Food Saver rolls, though um, we did post a deal this weekend, and I think it's still running actually, um, for buy three, get three free from foodsaver.com. So if you go directly to Food Saver's website, they are running a deal um, on their bags through that. Um, and yes, so Brenda's saying the, the stand-up one is much better. I have both. I agree, Brenda. So I've just kind of gone between the two. We rarely use our little flat one anymore. We always use the stand-up one. Um, it does cost more. So just, you know, that little bit. I also always get a question of what about a freezer? If you don't have that freezer space, is there a deal on a freezer? Um, if you don't have the freezer and you're wanting a freezer, I would encourage you at this point to probably wait for Black Friday. We will see a lot of stores put chest freezers, which is, you know, entry, bottom of the line, but they still work great for just storing your food. We're going to see chest freezers less than a hundred bucks. We always do on Black Friday weekend online. You won't even have to go anywhere. They'll ship it to you or you can pick it up in your local store. So if you're looking for a freezer, I would hold out for that one. Um, that deal if you don't already have one. Okay, um, so what about flea market produce? And I think that's fine. I'm not opposed to any produce that I grab. It can all be washed. It's all, in my book, it's all fresh produce. Um, I it, The real part that you're looking for is are we hitting the price points that we want? So just take that printout of the market report from today so that you can compare market report to what they're offering that you actually have you know, a decent price on it. Um, okay, and um, do I ever have issues with bags losing vacuum in the freezer? You tried different bags. Um, so we have not had a problem with that, Kelly, with the bags that we grabbed that were off-brand. The only time I will is if I'm putting up something that's super, super juicy and it doesn't get a good seal in the first place. So if you're doing a bag and it's just it's just not finally sealing, you know, and you kind of give up and you hit the seal button because it just won't go to seal point, that seal is probably not going to be that great. And what I might do is just stop and dry the bag and try to reseal it. So it's it's probably more a user error, I have those two, um, than the bags for me. And we only have that happen occasionally, but it's always on super juicy food if it does. Um, Hopefully that makes sense, though, for folks who've never used it. Um, okay, I think that I've caught everyone's question, but if I've missed your question as we've gone through because we've had a lot of comments, just feel free to stick it back in. I am not going to think you're yelling at me, I promise. I'm all about just making sure we didn't miss anybody. Um, okay, um, could you double bag? Nadine, you could. So if, if you're thinking that that seal didn't go all the way and you want to just put it in another one, go for it. Now, if you mean, could I double bag in a Ziploc bag? Uh, it's not the same thing. I promise. Um, you're not going to get the results that you would with a vacuum sealer. And it's hard. I am not one to be like, you need to go buy an appliance. But when it comes down to, I am buying bulk produce or bulk meat to save money, and then I end up losing it because of really bad freezer burn, you haven't really saved anything. Um, so it really is, uh, to me, almost a requirement 
if you're gonna buy bulk, that you have a way to store that bulk correctly. So six weeks or less, you're okay in a Ziploc, but six weeks or more, we really need to be going with a vacuum sealer. Um, and that's just in general, I don't know, let's just make it a rule across the board. Um, and Brenda's saying I do a second seal on Sloppy Joe's. So you could do that. You could pull it out, seal, and then pull out and do a second seal right behind that first one. So not even needing that second bag. That's a good idea too. Um, also, um, Diane says, if you get WIC, be sure to check if your area gives the farmer's market coupons to get free uh, fresh fruit and produce. That's a great tip, Diane. So anyone that's on WIC, don't forget to you know see if you can take advantage of the deals at the farmer's market too with WIC. Um, so, and Sue's saying, you know, we make lots of applesauce. You can put up anything in the freezer, guys. Just Google is your best friend on doing that. But when it comes to produce and vegetables, all of it can be. Keep in mind, some of it is not going to, I'm not going to pull out a frozen apple and eat it like a fresh one. Uh, I'm going to use it for baking. I'm going to use it for applesauce. I'm going to use bananas for baking. Um, a lot of things like that. So, you're going to use it for a different purpose, but I'm saving it so that I can do that. Uh, with vegetables, you're probably going to use them exactly as you planned. They're not going to be that different, but but fruit is, so do keep that in mind. Um, let's talk meat for a minute. Um, oh, uh, Shanna says, I watched a YouTube video on making bags, and I've been making double seals on the bags that I make. Do we? We do not, Shanna, make double seals very often. Um, but we've not had a hard time with our seals. I think if we had a, a you know a going fail rate uh, that was pretty high, I probably would move to double seals. But I, we just tend to do single seals, uh, and they've been fine with our units. But you know if if it got worse, I would totally go there. <laughs> oh, um, Teresa, I if you kidnap me, you would end up kidnapping my five kids too, and so then we would just have this whole. Um, crew coming to the grocery store and they might kick us out after that point. Um, okay, so another question on the food saver. Uh, someone saying, we only get a certain number of seals before it starts blinking. Yeah, we do that too. Your heat seals will get too hot um, and so it blinks because it wants time to cool down. So here's my little inside tip. Um, and this you may not have in your freezer, but we have lots of small kids. So you know the little popsicles that come in the, in the little strips? Um, or take Go-Gurt and freeze some. Um, you just want that popsicle, you know, that's like this, the little tube pops. We take a popsicle and pop open that food saver and just stick the popsicle down on the heat strips like a flash freeze and you're good to start going back and the blinking stops. Um, so just a, a way to speed up if you have uh, that issue. Just an inside tip. Uh, you could use ice cubes, but they're going to melt and make water go everywhere. So we just use our little popsicle to speed up that problem. Okay. Um, now, so that's produce kind of in a nutshell. I mentioned co-ops, and I didn't go there. So before we move to meat, I don't want to forget that one. Um, produce co-ops. Produce co-ops is where I'm going to get together. It's just like going to the farmer's market with friends, but you don't necessarily know these friends. So get together with folks in your church or folks in your community, start a co-op or join a co-op. Um, we are part of a co-op that's just a number of people in the community. If you live in the Columbia area, send me a Facebook message and I will gladly send you the link to our co-op. Um, so we get together, it's 22 bucks. You bring a laundry basket and your laundry basket is full at the end of that. And all we're doing is pooling that 22 bucks per person then going to the farmer's market and buying in bulk everything that 22 bucks allows us to buy and then splitting that up amongst folks. So we may get six containers of sweet potatoes and split that up amongst 50 baskets. Yeah, each one of those was 40 pound boxes of sweet potatoes, but we're probably all gonna come home with seven or eight sweet potatoes, a plenty for a couple of weeks. So our co-op meets basically every other Saturday. You're in if you wanna be in, you don't have to join every week. But that's the concept of a, of a co-op, is a way to take that 40-pound box of sweet potatoes and split it up amongst a whole group of people or multiples if you've got a lot of people that are part of your co-op. Um, so you can Google that one as well. I've also made a YouTube video on how to start a produce co-op. So if you don't have one in your area, it really is incredibly simple to start. 
Uh, Elaine, yes, these same things apply for organic veggies. Um, at big farmer's markets, you're not always going to find organic vegetables being sold in bulk because most large farms are not organic farms. Um, so you're probably, if you're really looking at 100% organic, you're probably going to end up in the frou-frou farmer markets, but you're probably used to paying that too, where for me, I would have a fit if I couldn't. Um, would I be willing to share my next laundry basket full? Um, Aaron, I shared one. Um, if you're wanting to just see a picture of what we got, I would not share my actual laundry basket full because we are enjoying all of it. But I did share a picture um, a few months ago. I laid it all out on the, on the table. So if you actually go to Instagram for me and you scroll through my Instagram feed, you'll see that. I shared it in a really short, like, 20-second video uh, and some pictures of that, too. <laughs> yeah, the male person would not like me shipping you my uh, – that basket probably weighed about 50 pounds um, that I shared in the video. So – 22 bucks, massively full laundry basket, but it's well worth. Uh, and then looking for a co-op in your area, B's question there, um, the best thing to do is honestly to Google it. Some co-ops are going to show up um, through that localharvest.org that I mentioned earlier, so you will see some in that matchup, um, but some are not. So just Googling Columbia, South Carolina Produce Co-op. Again, if you live in Columbia – or anywhere within, I would say, even a 45-minute drive and you're up for joining a co-op, send me a Facebook message uh, and I'll just shoot you the link really quick um, that you can join ours. So ours is open to anyone in the community um, and you're good to go. But look at, um, oh, my name on Instagram is Southern Savers. We're just all across the board, kind of a brand there. So Southern Savers, all one word. Um, what about local farmer crop share subscriptions? Great question, Jennifer. CSA Farms, that's really what that is, Community Supported Agriculture. It is where, as a farmer, you can come and buy a share in my farm, and then your share, you're going to get a fresh basket of food every week. I am all for those as well, Jennifer. They're a great price on produce. The difference between a CSA farm and a co-op um, is that with the CSA farm, whatever the farm grows is what I'm going to get, um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I want it. It doesn't mean that I'm going to like it. Uh, and with a co-op, it tends to be other like-minded people that are buying uh, with your money. So the, what they end up grabbing tends to be things that you like. Another thing that you can do with a co-op is have a swap table. So once all the baskets have been filled, uh, if you don't like something in your basket, head to the swap table and just switch it out with somebody else. Um, so I'm not coming home with mushrooms if I don't like them. Though we did have mushrooms in the basket that uh, my husband just shared the link to on Instagram. Um, we did have mushrooms in that basket, and I decided to be like Susie Q Homemaker, and we came home and made our own um, condensed cream of mushroom soup because I don't like mushrooms, but I use cream of mushroom soup every Sunday in our Sunday roast. So you can get creative too, and you may find that you actually will use all of those items um, just inside other things, but you could you could have a swap table too, but with a CSA farm, I can't. Those are still in a lot of areas, so if you can't find a co-op in your area, Google CSA farm, Community Supported Agriculture, and see if that's in your neck of the area too, or ne your neck of the woods. So Shanna says, what time of the year should I join a co-op? Any time of the year. For most co-ops, they it's just you pay and you get the next basket, um, so you can join any time you want, Shanna. Uh, CSA Farms, it tends to have a starting point, kind of a season. So a CSA Farm has a certain time of the year that you're going to join, but a co-op usually no. You're just going to join whenever you join and get a basket because you joined that week or the next week. Thank you. I am glad I'm not the only one, um, Erin, that does not eat mushrooms. Uh, and Heidi, you can have all of my stuffed mushrooms. Uh, I already give my husband all of my pickles, so I will just send you all of my mushrooms. That we, I, that is the joy of being an adult, guys, seriously, is that you uh, don't have to uh, eat things if you don't want to. I am not a kid anymore. Um, so that's the basics of produce. I want to get to meat, though, because that's the other half of the equation. How do we save on produce and how do we save on meat? 
because really the advice is the same. Shanna already mentioned that she grabbed a Zacon order recently, and Zacon is where we um, do uh, get most of our meat from. So Zacon sells bulk meat across the U.S., though I did um, see a note from... Um, Oh, your name is gone now, but I, I haven't forgotten you. Um, someone who always joins us from Hawaii. And she says, Zacon doesn't come here. Uh, I wish uh, that Zacon could put their chicken in a little boat and bring it to you in Hawaii. But they're everywhere else in the U.S., guys. So Zacon, my husband just stuck in um, my link for Zacon. Once you join, you can refer friends and you get um, a couple dollars off your next order. So if you go through that link, just to, you know, be uh, open and clear, that is my little link, and we get a couple dollars off of our next case. Um, but that is where we get most of our meat from. So they sell bulk chicken, bulk hamburger, at really, really good prices. So we saw boneless, skinless chicken breasts for as low as $1.29 a pound um, with a recent coupon code. They are running two coupon codes right now. So if you've never used Zacon before, you can use the code 25NOW, and now is in all capital letters, and you'll get $25 off your first $75 purchase. Um, and the other code is HAM286. Do you like this? I had him all prepped with what he needed to put in. I tried to make it so easy on him tonight. Um, so the other coupon code is HAM286, all capital letters on the HAM, and you get 22% off HAM. And that one's good for new and returning. Um, so on the HAM, um, that one expires tomorrow. So just a heads up. And I'll stick these on the YouTube side too. Um, so those are the codes for Zacon. Um, now, Zacon, if you've never done this before, you'll have a pickup site that's in a parking lot, and you drive in. There's just a really big truck. actually shared um, our pickup and Instagram stories last week. There's a really big truck. You drive up. You pop your trunk. They put the meat in it, and you drive away. It's really, really uh, unique the first time you go because you're actually wondering, like, what did I get? What did they put in the back of my truck? Um but it is very legit. The meat that you're getting is probably the exact same brand that your grocery store sells. So we've gotten Sanderson Farms, which if I go into Bilo, that's the chicken that Bilo sells. But I'm getting it in a 40-pound box, fresh, um, not frozen. So just keep that in mind. You are um, going to need to come home and seal this too. So that vacuum sealer that I already convinced you that you have to have for produce, you're going to turn around and use it for meat. And 40 pounds of chicken, some people panic. Guys, it's worth it. At $1.29 a pound, the grocery store is $1.99 a pound. Um, it's just an insanely cheap price. 40 pounds of chicken will last us right at three months, which is perfect because that is right where um, they come back through. Uh, and yes, our Zacon driver is very professional. It's not sketch at all if you've ever... Um, gone from there. It was just kind of that first moment of going and um, doing the pickup that you're, it, it's just a little unique. Um, so with um, Zacon, again, it's 40 pounds fresh. You're going to need to come home. You're going to need to put it up. Some of the things that they sell are frozen and already um, in bags. So last week, our pickup actually was chicken thighs. I've never grabbed that before, but almost every Instapot chicken recipe calls for chicken thighs and not chicken breasts. So we decided to branch out and add that one to our mix. Um, and that came in a bag ready to go in the freezer. So it was done, perfect and easy, but most of them do not. So ground beef, things like that, you're going to vacuum seal up and you're going to store. But it is a huge savings over buying it in the grocery store. Now, the next question everyone has on Zacon is what about organic? Um, if you're looking for organic meat, Zacon really isn't the way to go. They do not... Um, they do not market any of their meat as organic. They do tell you everything about it. It's all natural, no, no hormones, yada, 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 but they don't use the word organic. So if you're looking for grass-fed beef or organic chicken, etc., cetera, um, your best bet there is to go directly to a farm. You can buy half a cow, a quarter of a cow from local farmers. This is where local harvest that I stuck in for produce, meat is in there too, guys. So use that to find a local farm and buy a quarter of a cow. You do not want a whole cow. Just to let you know, buying a whole cow, and by the way, you don't ever meet this cow. You don't know the cow. You don't name the cow. 
it is it is already processed by the time it comes to you and, and already Ziploc bagged and vacuum sealed too. So um, not, not panicking there. The same for kosher. So you're gonna find farms that have gone through that process to be kosher certified. Um, use local harvest just so you kind of get there. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I'm glad that uh, it is kind of funny, Heidi. Um, it, it, it was, it's just a moment. Um, so with buying the cow and having it processed, you want to go directly to the farm on this one, but you don't want to go too huge. So I said you don't want a whole cow. That is going to take you probably five years to work through. It's 600 pounds of meat. But a lot of farms will let you buy just a piece. A lot will not require you to know all the people. You know, you don't have to bring your group of people to handle the whole cow. They will piece you together. So they'll say this person wants a quarter and this person wants a quarter. They'll wait till the whole cow is handled and then they will go ahead and process it. So you can do that. Don't feel like you have to get the whole animal. Um, and yes, Rob, so you can. You can totally buy just one quarter of a cow, one half a cow. They will piece you together with who they need to fill the order. Uh, and a lot of times you're not going to buy from the butcher. You're going to get a better deal from the farmer. So going straight to the local farmer. Um, uh, Heidi, I'm going to let someone else fill in on the kosher. My husband could probably even tell you a little bit better than I could. Um, it is, it's related to how it's processed and that it, it never did certain things, but I don't know all the things um, that need to be there to make something technically kosher, and I don't wanna, um, I don't wanna make things up either on that one. Um, but I know that it is very important um, in um, Jewish and um, Muslim and other places, uh, other religions too. So um, no Zacon in Connecticut. That's sad to learn, Jennifer. So do they have anything that might be um, even within a driving distance of you, I, I view Connecticut as like so tiny. I don't, I've never been there. But in, in my book, it's a super tiny state. Um, is there anything nearby in the, in the surrounding areas would be the next thing to look at. If you don't have a Zacon though, a little thing to check for on this one um, would be to see if you do have a local um, restaurant supply store. So this is our other go-to for meat. Um, we have a store in our area. I can I know that you don't have this in Connecticut. Um, it is, we have a U.S. Foods Chef store. There are only three in the country, Columbia, Charlotte, and Oklahoma. Um, but if you have any sort of restaurant supply store, see if they will let you buy from them. And a lot of them, you do not have to have a restaurant to be able to shop there. So U.S. Foods Chef store, anybody can walk in the door. It's open to the public and they sell bulk fresh meat. So you can go in and get boneless, skinless chicken breasts and ground beef and steaks and roasts and everything else imaginable. Um, we had there for some of the meats that Zacon doesn't always have. So uh, I can get a very good price on steaks. I can get fish, um, shrimp, things like that, that I don't need all the time. You know, if, I, if we're gonna make a low country boil, um, we're heading to the beach or whatever it might be, and we want those items, I'm gonna to head to the US Foods Chef store to get those. The prices are so much cheaper than the grocery store. Ground beef, guys, it's like two twenty nine a pound for 90% lean. You will not find that in the grocery store. But that's the, the perk of buying in bulk and freezing it. Um, so again, following the same logic of produce, awesome that you have a pickup. Yes, Zacon's coming through with chicken all over the place right now. So it was last week in our city. I know a lot of you have it this week and next week. Um, if they haven't come through, you can check and see if chicken's still available in your area that you could go ahead and jump in on the truck that's coming this week. Um, you, would not be, um, you would not be sad to get that deal, I promise. It's a good savings. Um, but I do want to go bulk. One other option on meat, to just throw this out there, is that you can um, go to local processors and if they have meat um, that was not claimed. So uh, hunters during hunting season, um, they kill more than they wanna pay for or whatever it might be, you can actually come and grab that meat um, and pay for it and still get it. So you didn't have to sit in a tree and wait uh, to catch a deer as I tell my husband. Um, and he reminds me that you can't catch a deer. 
um, but you can go and get that as well. So um, yes, and Shanna's kind of sticking that same in there. So you're going to go in and say, you know, do you have any meat that wasn't paid for? It's already vacuum sealed. It's already been sitting in their freezers. They are glad to get rid of it and they processed it. So looking for that. Aaron, you're right. Gordon Food Service is the other major um, restaurant supply store in the U.S. So GFS or Gordon Foods. Um, and then the U.S. Food Chef Store. Um, there's a third one. The name is not coming to me. Just Googling restaurant supply store, though, is how you are going to do that. Um, Rob, yes, there is terminology that you need to know to purchase a cow. And I actually did a post on this years and years ago. Um, let's see if I can find it super fast. Um, I think if you just Google Southern Savers and how to buy a cow, um, it will come up. It's kind of a random thing to search for. Um, but you will find, there we go. I managed to find it. Um, so how to buy a cow and all the questions that you want to ask on it um, and how much to buy. So I'll stick this in the chats for you. Um, and you can kind of go to it with that one with general questions. Um, you can also uh, possibly get a better deal going directly to a farmer and seeing if they will even handle a processor through a local butcher. So we're not even going through you know, the local butcher but going direct to the farmer because they have it as um, it's kind of a funny way to look at it, but there are cows that cannot go to full market, but they can still sell them to you. So I've always joked that it's like finding a scratch and dent cow. Um, it can't go and be sold at the main market where cows are sold because a lot of farmers in the cow industry, they don't raise them fully. They raise them to a partial point, then they sell the cow, and then the cow is sent to another field that finishes them. Um, so if I've got a cow that isn't eligible to be sold at this point, it could still actually be processed. There's not anything wrong with it. But the U.S. is very, very um, picky on things. So you might have a cow that has a messed up foot or something like that. It's not going to affect you. So you can find some local cow, uh, local farmers who will do that as well. Uh, yeah, so it's just scratching that cow. It's kind of what you're looking for, but you'll find a good deal there. Uh, that's going direct to the farmer to do that, though. Okay, um, let me make sure I didn't miss any questions in that. Um, I think I'm caught up. Oh, um, Jonathan says, do we buy meat at Sam's or warehouses? That's a good question too, Jonathan. What I've found with warehouses, with Sam's and Costco's and BJ's, their price for meat is the grocery store sale price. So I can get boneless, skinless chicken breasts in Sam's for about $1.99 a pound, but I can actually get that price in Bilo and in Publix and in Kroger on sale. So in the end, I haven't really saved anything because I had to be a, I had to pay to be a member of the warehouse. Um, yes, I can get that price every day of the week versus having to watch for the sale in the grocery store, but it really wasn't that much of a savings. And grocery store at $1.99 a pound just never can touch the Zacon at $1.29 a pound or even that U.S. Food Chef store or Gordon Food Service or other restaurant supply store that's also right around that $1.20 to $1.29 a pound versus the $1.99 in the grocery store. So the warehouses end up just not being the savings, especially when you add in the cost of the membership. Um, not for meat anyway. Um, so off topic, uh, Lynn says, the Rite Aid diaper deal worked like a charm, the $10 Catalina, the $10 in points. I'm glad that you got it, and I'm going to let you go off topic because before we run out of time, if any of you missed me popping in, I never pop in on a Sunday night, but it is the one deal. I had it sitting right here so I wouldn't forget to, Lynn, but it's like I planted you so that we were ready. Um, there are two deals, really, so if you don't have a Rite Aid nearby but you have a Kroger, through tomorrow at Kroger, you can double dip on two deals and get Huggies diapers for $1.99 a pack. It's a great price. But compared to Rite Aid, it feels like full price this week. So $1.99 at Kroger, or you can head to Rite Aid and get the deal. Um, I mentioned it last night. I put it up on Facebook a couple times. Um, but if you click on Rite Aid on the site, it'll pop in too. You will make money to buy diapers at Rite Aid this week. It's pretty incredible. Um, so if you are near Rite Aid, 
I don't, I mean, your kids could be 40. You should still get this deal and you should share it with people who are nearby because um, you would make any mama cry if you just walked up with diapers. Um, but it is, it's completely a free deal for Huggies diapers in the end. So uh, I'll stick that in the comments too. Go through and find that for you. Um, but a really, really good deal on diapers all week long at Rite Aid. So don't miss that deal. Uh, I won't go back through it because I did do a whole video on it and you can just click on Southern Savers videos on Facebook and you will see the video. For my YouTube folks, I did the video on Facebook. Uh, I didn't put it on, on YouTube, but I just stuck the link in there for you, uh, YouTube folks, so that you can at least see the post breakdown. But it's right there. So hopefully you guys can get that deal before the end of the week, though. Someone asked, um, you know, could I go later in the week? I don't know how long they're going to have diapers um, because I, I would, they're going to be selling out. Um, when Walgreens buys Rite Aid, Chris, yeah, we will do, I'll keep you kind of apprised as all of that happens. The, the purchase has technically happened. They're going to start converting Rite Aids by the end of October is what they're saying. And they want to have all of them converted into Walgreens by um, this, the beginning of 2018. So we're going to see them gone pretty quickly. Um, perk on this one, though, if you're like, oh, I just got $20 you know, dollars worth of Plenty points, don't forget that Plenty is not owned by Rite Aid. So a lot of people are worried about it ending. Plenty is owned by American Express. Uh, it's going to be around. It's still good at Bilo, and dixie Exxon, Mobile. So these points you're earning on the crazy good diaper deal, you can turn around and use them in a ton of places. Use them for gas. That's 20 bucks worth of gas done. Um, and you're, you're good to go. So don't panic if you have all these plenty points that you're going to need to figure out how to use them right now. But yes, I will definitely um, keep you up on it. Um, with the Catalina that's printing, you can use it lots of other places. Um, so I saw, um, who was it? Lynn said you used yours at Harris Teeter. That Catalina is a manufacturer's coupon, so you're good to use it anywhere you want. Um, and CVS, yeah, um, Aaron, you're not it's not just you. CVS panics. The cashiers panic when they see another store's logo. Uh, and that's just across the board. So CVS is not the place that I would try to use another store's Catalina. I also would not take them to Publix for all of my folks in the South. I know you don't have a Publix nearby, um, but uh, Publix panics when they see a drugstore logo. Uh, because years and years ago, we could use drugstore coupons there. Now we cannot, but cashiers are so trained to not take a drugstore coupon that they won't even try it. Uh, Harris Teeter, Lowe's Foods, Walmart, those stores are never going to give you an issue with that coupon, though, and you can always use it other places. Uh, and I would definitely, yeah, Lynn, get to Rite Aid sooner rather than later because this deal, you're getting eight packs of Huggies diapers for free, but they're going to run out. Um, if they do run out, another inside tip there, and for anyone that you share this with, Get the wrong size. If all they have are newborns left, just get them. Buy eight packs worth of diapers because you can always come back and exchange them next week for the right size. <laughs> just hold on to the receipt. Um, but go ahead and get whatever they have in stock. Uh, even if it's the preemie size, you have the packs of diapers, you got the deal, and then you can turn around and exchange them for the size that you need once they restock. Um, when we're up north in Connecticut and New Jersey, we would get salmon at Costco is Shanna's tip. Um, and, you know, if you can get um, a good deal and you feel like you're hitting your price point, go for it wherever you can get it. I don't know that I would pay for the membership just for meat, but if you've already got the membership, it is a decent seal price on meat, definitely. Um, let's see. <laughs> oh, goodness. Christy says you bought a pack of diapers that was there since 2013. Um, well, I guess this is their way of cleaning out some diapers then. Um, let's see. That's awesome. I'm glad, Abby, that your husband was able to get it too. And that Toys R Us gift card, if you don't want it, I mentioned this last night in the video, you can always turn around and sell it, guys. Sell it on gift card sites and whatnot. Um, but you don't have to keep it, but it's going to be pretty awesome for Christmas presents too. So hold tight to it and just knock out a present there. Um, thanks to Rite Aid for <laughs> giving you that extra little inside bet. Um, that's probably the one big deal that I would not miss at the, at the grocery stores. One little inside deal that you can get, I did not post this, I'm not a huge fan of glitches because they don't stay around very long. 
But there is a glitch at CVS this week, um, and I'm not sure if they've even fixed it. It was working this morning when I was there. Um, but if you like Nexus hair care products, which we never have coupons for, Nexus is very high, um, high value. It's supposed to be buy two and get a $12 extra care buck, but it's actually printing a $16 extra care buck. So buy two Nexus products and you'll get a $16 extra care buck. Uh, their cheaper items are around 12 bucks. So you're gonna pay 24 bucks, but you're gonna get back 16 right after that. That's just an inside like glitch running at CVS. Um, they can fix it, it is not what's advertised. So if it doesn't work for you, it's ended. But it was working for me earlier today at CVS, so hopefully it'll work for you guys too. Um, so Kim says, I'm new to the area with a Harris Teeter. So far, I'm not impressed. What Am I missing something? Um, with Harris Teeter, Kim, and really with any grocery store, you want to stay on list. So I want to go only on the BOGO deals um, and then using coupons. Harris Teeter does double coupons, 99 cents or less, which makes for some really great savings if you've got those 75 cent coupons um, because they're they're $1.50 in value. The other thing, I don't know if you were there, they just ran super doubles um, in the past, I guess it was last week. Um, super doubles is the big time to be at Harris Teeter. Every $2 coupon is now worth $4. They tend to run that the first weekend of the month, every month. Uh, we will see them run it in November. We will not see them run it in December. They never run a coupon event in December. And then we'll see it almost on New Year's weekend is what it's going to feel like for the next one. Um, but sticking with just the BOGOs in Harris Eater, you're going to save a ton. And they have a lot. So if you look at the um, Southern Savers Harris Teeter list and you compare that to your weekly ad, the list is a lot longer. We go through and we pull all the unadvertised BOGO deals. And there's usually a good 50 to 60 BOGO items throughout the store. So just sticking with that, you're going to do pretty well. Um, uh, let's see. <laughs> Shanna, I, it's okay if you don't have a baby. Just make the money and donate them. You know, folks don't realize, but diapers are actually something that if you're on food stamps and WIC and you're needing assistance, this is not paid for by any program. So donating this to the food bank, it's one of their big needs. Because if they have it, they can give it to the folks who come. But if they don't have it, they can't give. They can't help them with that. So absolutely free diapers. It's a huge chance to be able to donate something that they need that's normally way more expensive than any of us could really handle to be donating on a normal basis. So make that 15 bucks, Shanna, and donate them all. I know you also commented it's a good thing to even donate to folks who are sending things down to Puerto Rico. You could, we could go very big and donate to the disaster relief folks uh, that need that as well. Uh, Jackie, the diaper deal at Kroger is very similar to the Rite Aid deal. It's a double dipping deal. And I'll stick that link in. Um, I put in a, I, I put it back up on the site today just as a reminder. Um, but I will stick the link in, um, oh, where to go? So that you can um, grab those too. So here we go, it always takes me a second. But the Kroger deal ends tomorrow, and you can get Huggies diapers for $1.99 a pack at Kroger with that deal. It's not a money maker, but $1.99, if you don't have a Rite Aid, that's still a really good price for diapers. Um, okay. Oh, and Children's Hospital, yeah, I mean, we could really donate those anywhere that you wanted. For me, with the hospital, um, I still feel like they've got folks, they have a budget that can handle that. I would probably give them to the food bank. And for the reason for that is having been in the back end of the food bank and seeing the diaper bin that they have, almost every time I go to the back side of the food bank, the diaper bin is completely empty. They have a basket for each size in this big rolly bin, but there's nothing in any of the baskets. And it kind of breaks your heart because you know that the families that are coming in needing that assistance need those diapers, but there are none there to give. And they can only give what they have. So um, I would kind of um, point as many people as I can to, to donating to the food bank if you can. Um, uh, I, I love uh, the truth that goes on in the comments with everybody. Um, so where can we get whole chicken wings at a good price in Charlotte? So Stacy, I would point you 
um, to the U.S. Food Chef store. It's on the south side of Charlotte. Anybody can shop at the U.S. Food Chef store. Um, if you have one near you, that's the restaurant supply store. They do sell um, pretty much every cut of meat imaginable you can buy there in bulk. So I would head in that direction. Okay, we're right at that point. Um, I don't know what we're going to talk about next week. If you guys have anything that you want us to talk about, we can totally go there. Um, so send me an email, send me a Facebook message. If you're in the Columbia area and you want to link to the co-op that we participate in, I um, send me a Facebook message or an email for that too. My email is jenny at southernsavers.com and I will gladly just shoot you a link. It may be a super short email just so I can get that out and get them, get them all sent out tonight, but I will gladly send out any links that folks need. Um, and then follow up. If you've got any other questions, you can always send them to me. I tend to be faster on Facebook messages because they ding me and they time me and I have to answer them. Um, but I will gladly uh, get to them as fast as I can. Tony asks, is the U.S. chef store cheaper than Sam's? Yes. You are going to walk in, Tony. If you have a chef store near you, even my folks that are in Greenville and Ash, you're within driving distance of Columbia or Charlotte, um, you're going to love it. I wish that I could bring like a sleeping bag and just live at the chef store. The prices are so amazing. Um, so they are going to cream all the warehouse clubs and you don't have to pay a membership. This is amazing. Why should I pay a membership if they're just going to give me prices that are so much better? So yes, definitely check out the chef, or, uh, the chef store if you have not already. Okay. Um, so all cut up. Send me an email. I will see you guys next Monday night. Same time, same place. Um, other than that, if I find any other deals, I'll pop on and try to share them throughout the week. Um, and I hope you guys have a great week. Uh, thanks for joining me tonight.